Hi, this is Dave Philippi with FabCAD, and we're really excited about all the new features we have to offer with our FabCAD version 2024. Among those are new enhanced commands, new data protection features, new dimensioning features, new dialog box features, and faster downloads and installations, back office improvements a little faster, and some bug fixes. So we'll start with the new enhanced commands first. Okay, our newest command is the arch text command. And then improved commands include an improved rail trim command, which emulates closely to the regular CAD commands on how trim works there. And the same thing for the R extend command. And then we've added a lot of new features to the R copy command to make it work similar to the existing CAD copy command. So under the text command, we have a new command, arc text. First thing we have to do first is draw an arc. So we'll go here to the arc, and we'll just stick something in here. Okay, and then we'll go in here and click the command, arch text. And it prompts you to pick an arc. We'll pick that. In here, you have a dialog box pops up and you can type in what your text is. So I'm going to say is text test. OK, click OK. And it follows the art. You click on the text and you can do adjustments and things like that. Pretty cool. And if you want to make any changes to it, you just click this command again and click the text itself and it brings the dialog box back and then you can set it so you want the text to be above the arc or below the arc and you can go through and play around with these different settings you have here of course you can change the height of the text and do all kinds of modifications to it like that okay now let's take a look at the new R trim and R extend command so I'm going to go to the gate program and generate a new gate here. I've got a two by four frame gate. Okay, so the scenario here is customer wants the pickets to go through and they, they, want it, they want the pickets in an arch above this straight section here. So I'm going to erase this dimension, draw a line in the midpoint here, say uh, 18 inches. Okay, and I'm going to draw an arc. Okay, so now I'm going to use the rail extend command because I want to keep track of what's going on and auto rail can do that. I'm going to use these commands and it'll update the cutlass as we need it. So I click on rail extend and select the boundary edge, which is this arc. And then before you had to pick into each individual piece, now you can just go through and cross through and boom, there you go. Okay. And then I'm going to erase this line here and the arc. Now, the thing is this is a two by four frame, so I'm going to I'm not going to try to punch through this thing. I am going to just weld these pieces on top. So I need to trim out the midsection here. Uh, so I can then I'll update the cut list with the, the new parts. So now I'm going to go to the rail trim command and I have two options end and mid. Well end is if you're just going to trim from one end then you just select that and it'll give you one cut line. Mid will give you two. So it says select first boundary edge so I'm going to pick this and then it says select second boundary edge and I'm going to pick that and then I'm going to trim out in between. All I need to do, I can do a cross, I can do a fence, and there it is, slick. Okay, now I do a bill of materials update. And I've added all these new parts to the cut list. That's going to come in real handy for a lot of different types of fabrications. So let's take a look at our rail copy command. So the first thing I'm going to do, let's bring in a railing here. So I'm going to import a template called double picket array and load that. 
And also you notice at the bottom now we show you what template you're working with. So then I'm just going to go ahead and draw this. And we have you know, the, the capability of doing alternating short pickets, but that's every other picket. But there are times in scenarios you've seen where if there's a two picket and then an extended picket. So let's go ahead and create that one panel here. Then we'll show you how the R copy program works. So I'm going to go to the rail extend command and I'm going to pick this boundary edge here and I'm going to pick every two pickets. Okay, so now we've got this done. So now you could go across and do all of them all the way across. It may be quicker just to erase the rest of these panels and then just copy them over. So let's show you how the rail copy works now. So we're going to erase these other panels. And erase this dimension. All right, so we're going to copy this panel over to the rest of the railing. So I'm going to go to the rail copy, and the prompt, the beginning prompt stays the same. Do you want to do it a, an assembly or a piece? The piece is the default, so I'll right click, select the object. So I'm going to select the bottom bar and this whole panel here. The rail assembly is going to stick with the same railing we're starting with, so I'll just right click for that. And then the base point will be the, say, the midpoint of this post. And now it, it, I'll do the midpoint of this post. And now I can, just can continue. Before you weren't able to do that. And also the base point changed on you. So now we'll just take this all the way across. And we're done. Did escape. Okay. Then I'll go back and do a bill of materials update. And that'll update the cut list. And it's added the additional pickets. 15 longer pickets and 40 short pickets. Okay, let's take a look at these data protection features we've added. So if you go to your customize box, and you've done a lot of work in here setting new materials, adding custom shapes and all that sort of thing. And then when you get out of this, you click OK. If you were to hit import settings instead of export settings, it would have written over the registry everything that you've put in there. So we're giving you a little warning. If you're about to, you're about to overwrite the registry where all this stuff is saved, do you want to import? Well, you would say no, you don't want to do that. You want to export it to update your settings files, you'd click that, and then it'll ask you, they're about to overwrite the rail settings files, or you want to export. Well, you want to answer yes to that, so you're saving what you've just done, the work you've just done. You want to export that out, just like you would export a template on the horizontal rail drawing program, okay? So that can save a lot of grief right there. Okay, so these have been exported. All right, so. So if you run a routine in the horizontal rail program and then you cancel out of this for a second and then you come back and accidentally hit another one instead like the gate program, well, when you went back to the horizontal rail program, everything was lost, but now it's still there. And if you open up a new drawing and you bring up the horizontal rail program, if you want to draw it in a different environment, you'll see whatever you left off with also remains when you open a new drawing. You also notice at the bottom that it tells you what template you're working on. And you notice the customized box has changed. It has tabs at the top now, easier to navigate around the different options here. New dimensioning features include when you set the offset distance for a secondary top rail or secondary bottom rail, that offset distance now would be the daylight opening. So if you were putting four inch rings or, or four inch pattern in the upper border, that's the opening that you'll end up with. 
So we did the same thing with the gate and the fence program. So when you click on the gate program and you go to the gate dimensions, the dimensions now work inside to inside instead of top to top. It makes it easier to deal with. So then, and then that'll generate the daylight opening between the top and the bottom and also the top one and the bottom one at the bottom section of the gate. In the steering rail program, if you switch off the landing, you now have a bend option here that you add, and then you apply that data there, and it'll draw the railing according to whatever you specify. On the, if you go to the stringer rail, stair and stringer, you have an option here, and when you do away with the landing, is that you have a bend for the railing and also for the stringer. With the advent of our new subscription service, we will be introducing new features as they become available throughout the year. We will also be introducing additional tips and tricks movies and providing new library items requested by our subscribers. Existing customers will receive substantial discounts. Contact us for more details.